I'm back at the Bay Truck Stop in uh, North Bay, Ontario, of all places, and I'm conveniently parked at uh, Master Point. Very important. If something happens, I am right here. <laughs> can see from all the axles right you know right away this is not US right <laughs> everything is B trained and uh, uh, yeah like you see that guy with lumber that's a B train right well this guy I don't know what's he doing here this uh, driver and second from the from the left tandem axles in the back come on See this guy next to him has a trident, and then this guy a flatbed uh, three plus one, right? And the guy next to me is uh, Landstar Pete with some cool machinery, army uh, vehicles, oh, tandem. Yeah, you know I got a thing about. I got a thing about uh, axles. See, look at this. Three plus one and three. See, seven axles. <laughs> That's like normal in here. Uh, and the cool thing is that now I'm pretty sure that uh, Western Canada, they started uh, recognizing uh, lift axles on trailers as long as they are uh, steerable, you know? So you can do a lot of weight with these uh, flatbeds and step decks. Um, whereas before it was only th all th only three axles, but now they finally started recognizing four axles. Sorry for my look, like I look like a bum, you know. But I left my all my hair cutting utensils are in my car in Cambridge, and I've been on the road for like two weeks, and all of a sudden my beard started growing like crazy. I don't know what's going on. And um, so what happened is uh, I didn't I didn't post a video. Um, so today is uh, Wednesday, right? So after that crazy walk, 10 miles or 16 kilometers on Saturday in Montreal from the park where I was doing photography. So Sunday I could barely move, so I spent just in the truck stop, inside the truck stop, and then uh, in the truck was reading books. I bought a couple, uh, like a three or four. Uh, ebooks I was reading on my tablet in here let me show you by the way like I love this tablet so you see I have this app right playbooks and so I read this one uh, all you do is kill and that's the original book that the uh, movie um, with uh, uh, Tom Cruise is based on what's the name basically what well, he keeps dying all the time right and then I got, well, that was my old one. This was just a sample, John Grisham. But yeah, this one was nice. My Connolly, The Wrong Side of Goodbye. And I got this one, Flight of the Intruder, Stephen Coons. You know? So that's what I do now. I don't, that was just a sample as well, I think. No, that one, I got that one. Um, you see, uh, I don't buy books anymore because it's so much easier to read them on uh, on the tablet and you don't have you don't need storage and uh, the price is the same but the cool thing is that you have access to so many books you know uh, if you go to a regular store right they might not have the book that you want but over here there's like thousands of books over there and they already have my all my info all I do is just push one button buy boom and then you click read and that's it and so just to get back to my uh, tracking uh, things so yeah I was waiting I knew Monday would be slow so Monday there was no load Tuesday no load okay then I, I start to get impatient because normally in the middle of the week that's when you can you get loads right and I'm in Montreal it's not it's never a good area for me I don't know why maybe because my trailer is too specialized but so I decided I would give them till Wednesday lunchtime to find me a load and 
around uh, like 10 o'clock today, Wednesday, I sent an email. I said, I'm going to, at noon, I'm going to start deadheading home. Since you don't have a load, uh, I have a couple of small things I have to take care of on the truck, you know, like hay and the fuel. Then want to do uh, uh, anti-corrosion protection of all electric parts. And then my... Um, these things uh, stopped working and I cannot fix them, right? The 12 volt adapters, now I cannot even... And uh, then the fuse in my... Uh, that little transformer uh, burned, so now I cannot even uh, charge my, my laptop, you know? So I need these to work. Uh, at least this one works, so I can charge my uh, GoPro and I can charge my tablet with this through USB. <laughs> if this one stops working, I I'm in trouble. So anyway, there were like a couple of things that uh, accumulated over the past uh, few weeks and I said, if you guys don't have a load, I'll start tracking at noon, be at home, and then I would put the truck in the shop for like Thursday and hopefully they will... Uh, because I know Fridays are usually very busy at uh, shops, you know, like Mac shop. And so I said, I can, if you find me a load, I can be back on the road, let's say Friday, Saturday or Monday. And then I called them again at noon, just before I left the truck stop. I said, just to be clear, I'm starting to move, right? And, and they said, okay, we understand. And so I started driving and I'm on this bypass 30 around Montreal. Uh, just going to 20 and then so I can catch 401. It's like six hour drive But you know, what do you do uh, and my phone rings in the hands-free mode of course and uh, uh, Dispatch says uh, where are you now? I said I'm 30 approaching 20 just basically about to leave Montreal. Oh uh, Can you stay on uh, 40 and keep going? I said I said, what's going on? Oh, we have a load in uh, Sudbury. I said, Sudbury? Okay, how far is that? Uh, that's pretty much like the same distance as to home, except now I go to Sudbury, I do one load uh, to US, and then from the same spot where I drop this load, I pick up another machine and I bring it back to the same place in Sudbury. It's like there was no loads for like five days, right? Friday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, then all of a sudden there's two loads at the same time. Okay, I see that the machine is behind me. I'm at the shipper's yard. And I'm picking up uh, one of those mine trucks. You'll see in a second. So now I just go, need to go and get my uh, trailer uh, ready. Probably remove those uh, timbers in the back there because they might be in the way.
yeah this machine was tricky you know? uh, if you saw I just need a quick respite here but the, tr the trouble was is that the wheels actually what well, that's what we were measuring the the inside of the tires is uh, 54 inches right which is not too bad and my my center uh, outside beam to outside beam is 45 so we had nine inches you know to play with and then but the problem was when he was started driving it uh, one side was a bit off he kept keeping to his side because he sits on that side right and you know once it's on the trailer you cannot correct this on the trailer because the rear wheel was uh, going into the frame because it's an articulated machine right and so that's what I learned the best way to correct is drive off the trailer and then uh, try again and so finally we did it so now I just have to tie it down and be on my merry way to Illinois those are my weights so the steer axle has 12,540 pounds the drives are 42.7 42,760 and the trailer is 59,840 and the gross weight is 115,140 and then knowing this one you see I, I, I keep a copy of this old cat receipt that's me empty with seven axles that's my empty weight so I deducted that and so this machine weighs 69,260 pounds, which is a bit more than what my dispatch told me. They told me it was 60, 65,000, and then I look at my paperwork, and the paperwork says, um, says 70,000, you know, and it did feel heavy. Uh, so basically the result of that scale so it's always a good idea to scale and one of these days I'm going to install the the uh, right way thing and the result of that was that I added uh, another couple of chains because uh, I had three pairs of chains basically which was okay for 65 66 thousand pounds but it was a bit short for 69 or 70 right and I just uh, so basically I got one pair in the front and then I added this one with uh, with that latch over there and then another pair in here and the center is blocked with that red pin 
and the bucket is tied down and then I had to climb in there and uh, put two chains over axles see so these that I installed myself after well I had a well chop right so very handy sometimes to have them on this on this part of the trailer you know because what else would I use if if um, if I didn't have this and normally I try to put the wheels against this rise but uh, it touches slightly over there but then after we we, were, we we had to wiggle the machine a little bit to to install this uh, that pin right and we did that wiggling and I said that's it I'm not gonna we're not gonna touch it you know like and the bucket was sitting like this um, yeah normally it's a good idea to pull them push them against this so that they don't move but it's so heavy so you know it looks small right but uh, lots of weight on the trailer almost 60,000 pounds but now with these two I feel safer because see they I angled them a bit, little bit like this to compensate for these ones these ones are pulling forward right and down this one is pulling down a little bit backwards so and everything is open on this machine I asked the guy if he wants me to oh yeah they're, they're supposed to be uh They're supposed to be, oh look, this is not even, that's not good. What if it opens when, I, when I'm driving? So I asked him about the, about the exhaust and the guy said, don't worry about it, it's hidden, right? So you don't have to. We don't have to cover it on this one. It's a used machine, but they said it's fine. Basically, these guys did the reconditioning. And this one thing, that's very important. The guy told me, I mean, he showed me the master switch so that the battery does not die as I'm driving. So now it's in, see, uh, like a circle means that zero. So no power. To, to activate power, I have to turn it this way. And that's emergency switch and of course it runs on a since it's a cat machine it runs on a cat i know what that is but looks like a six cylinder uh, almost identical to a highway uh, highway engine too bad they don't make them anymore right there's two buddies here with uh two containers each the same company Western Star, Scott Woods Transport. Now look at that load. <laughs> no wonder that guy parked like that, right? And he has, uh, what is that? Super Stacker. Jesus. And that guy has a lift axle, has a big, big steer axle, right? That's my dream truck. See, but I cannot get it. T800 with a big front axle. See, uh, self steer uh, pusher. It is a single tire. Normally, that's self steer. Right. And this guy, I think he's trying to steal this. Like when, when the see this pickup guys. Good. Okay. I'm always wary about pickup guys. Like normally, whenever you see a pickup truck at the truck stop something something is gonna happen so you see he's like okay distracting a distracting a maneuver so he's just waiting for this guy to to uh, nod off for a second he's gonna steal this trailer I guarantee it <laughs>
somewhere in the tank area right because otherwise it would happen all the time but the power loss the air I feel in the fuel system only happens when uh, my tanks are not full at the end of the day yeah I stop at the closed inspection station and I'm all dirty I have, now I have to change my my pants my t-shirt see I'm here somewhere so going south through Barrie and of course even now there's a uh, stop traffic over here that's Cambridge so still 268 kilometers still pretty far and uh, dispatch called me and they said that Michigan is running behind with permits by one day so they said you're not gonna get my I'm not gonna get my permit today so there's basically no need to rush I'll, I, I said okay I'll just stay in Cambridge overnight okay let's go check the, the load because it's been more, over an hour since I left uh, since I left Sudbury Look at this tire. Look, my tire, two of my, oh, my wheels are the same width as this. And just as I was about to, to start moving, I decided I didn't like those chains, like the ones on the front, I was almost at the max and they were still not uh, tight enough, not to my liking, you know. And why is because this machine has a big overhang on the front and basically all those chains were doing, they were pushing it down and I could see there was a big bulge on the tire and they were just canceling each other out you know and so I removed the chains on the bottom there and I, 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 I angled them forward the top ones and I put one chain uh, in the middle so now like like the front and the rear are pulling in the opposite direction and then in the middle I have two chains like one pair of short chains and one long chain and they're also canceling each other out you know like they pulling in the opposite direction this is the best this way and also I uh, I lowered the trailer because the front was uh, too tall I lifted that because I uh, when I was leaving the 
when I was leaving the truck stop. Okay. It looks like uh, I did not leave any chains on the ground. <laughs> That's what I was checking for. Yeah, so it's pretty serious weight, you know. 115,000 pounds. The right window is open, that's why the sound of the engine is a bit more pronounced than usual. But I know lots of guys like uh, to hear the engine when it's working hard during acceleration, so there you go. A little bit of a heel. It's gonna probably take me a while to pick up speed here. But like I mentioned, so they said there's no point in uh, going to the border today. So I'm now I'm relaxed. I don't need to rush. And the next town is called Moon River. And that's it. That's Fenida for the day. This tree shed so much stuff on my car when I'm gone. Spent like half an hour now cleaning my car. Like all this old, um, like this stuff. You no. Know? My my hood was all covered by this stuff. Anyway, let me just shut down the uh, the engine. I already moved all my stuff in the car. We'll go grab something to eat and uh, we'll continue tomorrow.